to every one of you. It's so wonderful to be here. Bishop Naomi McCowan, thank you so much for having me and having all of us divas here in the midst. My name is Charlotte Crossley, and you can Google me right now. You can. Um, God has really blessed me, and I am so grateful to stand before you. And I just want to say that, you know, for all of us in the room, not everybody is an artist, but you go to church and you've got great singers and great praise dancers and great musicians, and God has given them a gift. He's given them a gift to not only just be in church, but to go out, because that anointing is for out there. That's where they need us, what we do. And, you know, as we mature in our craft, and, you know, it's funny because when I was a young girl growing up in Chicago on the South Side, I had a lot of, my parents gave me a lot of uh, enrichment, you know, dance and voice, and I started singing in the choir at church. But, you know, when I would watch TV and I would see Lena Horne on TV or Dorothy Dandridge on TV, I go, I want to do what they're doing. And I would see Darling Love on Shindig or Hullabaloo, and I go, I want to do what that girl's doing. And so I thank God that he allowed me to do those things. He opened the door for me, no man can close. And he waited for it and he stood there and was about But uh, I'm gonna tell another story between songs, but right now I just wanna do this little number. And I'm gonna sing it off the paper, because I can. And, <laughs> you know, I just wanna say that uh, uh, I got a chance to do the color purple for a little while, and I was with Carol Dennis, and boy oh boy did we have a ball, and I learned so much from watching her every night. And you know what it was amazing? This when I was learning the show and I would sit in the audience every single night in that opening scene. Honey, we weren't playing church. We was having church. For real. And the audience would go in. And it was an incredible experience. And you know, so it's wonderful to live life and grow up in the business and see these the power of God manifested in a theater with high paying prices, with, with, with big ticket shows. So it's a blessing. You know, God can do anything but fail. And I'm grateful for that. So this is an old hymn.
You know, I had a boyfriend, I was kind of shacking and packing. So he went on over to France, he went over to Paris, and I was gonna meet him. And so uh, I took the plane over, uh, but going to the airport in Chicago, my dad cussed me out all the way to the airport. And I went, okay, I'm getting on this plane. And you know, this was a dream that I had had, and it was coming true, and nobody was gonna keep me from it, nothing. That daddy not wanting me to go, whatever, nobody was gonna keep me from it. And so when I got there, my boyfriend met me at the um, he met me at the airport in Brussels, and we took a train from Brussels going into Paris. And so I was on the uh, train, and he was acting real ignorant. And I just thought, hmm. So I had a, a tab of a purple haze acid in my purse, and I took it. And so I, I, this is this really happened. And so we're just chug along, chug along, chug along, chug along the French countryside. Oh, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. Get into Paris, France. The first thing that hits me is all the smells and all the people. And I saw the Eiffel Tower over here and the Arc de Triomphe over here. And I was peeking and I said, you know what? This is the perfect way to be here. It's just intense. See, you can come on laughing at me. I'm, I'm not making it that you know, excited, but it really did happen. But I wanted to say that for all of those things, and there were many, many moments, God brought me through. He brought me through. He kept me. The prayers of my grandmother, they kept me. It didn't matter what happened out there. I still came, and I'm here before you, and I give him praise for that. I give him praise. I really do. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. And so when I started, uh, when I got into the, um, the Broadway, the first national tour of Hairspray, playing Motor Mouth Mabel, I had been away from the theater for 30 years. And so much had happened. So much had happened with the way business was done. And by that time I was married and I had a son. And so I, I went on the road and I did this show. And when I was learning this song, it came to mean so much to me. And it happens uh, in the show, it's what they call the 11 o'clock number. And after everything has gone on in the first act, and here is something that happens in the second act that brings everything together. It tells the story. This is the story of Tracy Turnblad, who integrates a TV dance show. And she goes to North Avenue to uh, where Mola Ruff Mabel has her record shop. And all the kids come and they dance and they get down and they boogaloo. And if you've seen the movie, the original movie, Ruth Brown played Mola Ruff Mabel. And she had, uh, they had real, the real artists from that day come and be in the movie and sing their hits. And so it was really authentic the way John Waters did it. But the thing that was that rang out to me was that during this time, it was right at the crest of the civil rights movement. Dr. King had not given his I Had a Dream speech yet. But Motormouth was imparting to these kids. And every night, this music would begin, and the kids would be gathered around, the black kids, the white kids, and Motormouth would tell her story. And her story became my story. Remember where you've gone. Yes. 
understand.